So it's fair to say that the rumors regarding the chips in the iPhone 14 series have been pretty confusing because initially there were rumors regarding the A16 chip being based on three nanometer process. Then we had rumors regarding a four nanometer process. Then we had rumors regarding the regular iPhone 14 models sticking with the A15 chip. And now we have a report adding to all this confusion, basically saying the A16 chip is not really going to be that big of an upgrade over the A15. And so let's delve into it guys, but first make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. And with that being said, let's just talk in. So this report comes from Shrimp Apple Pro, a very credible source, and so I do think this is legit. However, do note, Shrimp himself says, do take this with a grain of salt. So yeah, remember to do that as well. So essentially, Shrimp tells us the A16 chip is going to continue using the 5 nanometer process we've had for two years now with the A14 and the A15 chip. Now that is kind of a bummer because I believe Qualcomm and also Exynos have moved to 4 nanometer processors and so many of us were expecting Apple to do the same with the A16. And obviously the smaller the nanometer process, the better the efficiency and the performance. And so this would have been upgrades many would have appreciated. Then again, some could say that Apple's already ahead of the competition with the 5 nanometer process. And so using it for another year with the iPhone 14 series is not going to be that bad. But just because it's based on a 5 nanometer process doesn't mean there's not going to be any upgrades. Shrimp does say the CPU is going to be slightly better and of course we're going to see LPDDR5 RAM. That's going to be appreciated and also we could see a better GPU. Also I believe Maguire Wood told us we could see better thermals with these iPhones that improves the peak performance. And so yes even with the same nanometer process we should see gaming improvements with the iPhone 14. Pro series due to a possible vapor chamber cooling system. And this is quite appreciated because there has been thermal issues with these iPhones. Yes, the chips are very powerful, but of course, they need beefier thermals to sustain that performance. And so I'm happy to see that's going to be the case with the 14 Pro series. And yeah, that might be the big advantage the Pro models have over the regular models with the A15 chip and the worst thermals. So even if there's a very small jump in terms of raw performance between these two chips, I do think better heat management is going to make a massive difference to the real life performance of the A16 chip. And ultimately, one could argue these chips are powerful enough. I mean, I've felt the iPhone is powerful enough for my needs for quite a few years. So, of course, slowing down these upgrades is not a massive issue when the A15 chip itself is still more than enough. Plus, like Shrimp says, the 4 nanometer process really has not given Qualcomm and Exynos many advantages. And so Apple skipping this really won't be a massive con, I guess. Also, do remember, guys, there is a chip shortage. Many companies are struggling. And so, of course, using a tried and tested 5 nanometer process for these chips could help Apple get these iPhones out faster. And that's what matters at the end of the day, because... I would much rather have iPhones that are readily available with these chips compared to iPhone 14 models with supply constraints and the 4 nanometer chip. Also with inflation, the cost of producing these iPhones has massively increased. And so if using the same 5 nanometer process can help Apple lower the price hike for these Pro models, that again is going to be appreciated. Anyways, let's delve into your thoughts regarding future iPhones. So Johnny Bravo is in the comments and he says, iPhone 13 Pro or regular 14? And between those two phones, I don't think that's a fair comparison because last year's Pro model obviously is going to be better than this year's base model. And so if you're deciding between these two phones, then yes, get the 13 Pro because you're getting the triple lens cameras, you're getting basically the same performance, 120 hertz, the better builds, and ProRes. However, do remember the 13 Pro is going to be discontinued, so if you do plan to buy this new, of course, make sure to buy it shortly after the 14 release because I'm sure there isn't going to be a ton of stock left. So Goofy Bright says, I'm waiting for iPhone 15 Pro Max, 
for the periscope zoom lens and fair enough I don't blame you though of course let me remind you that leaks can be false especially early ones and so make sure that you're comfortable waiting for a periscope zoom iPhone because it might be the 16 or even the 17. However I am hoping that we do see some telephoto upgrades with the iPhone 14 series since of course Apple's way behind the competition in this aspect. So BC Evans says was interested in 8k ProRes but great point about transfer speeds and the lightning ports as the files will be massive. And yeah, that is the massive issue we have right now because while ProRes looks great, it takes way too long to transfer the files and so giving us a Thunderbolt port would be great and I'm hoping we see that with the 15 series like some reports have suggested. So Jay White says, I think eSIM only iPhones are going to be in the US, March like millimeter wave. And yes, I discussed this in a previous video, but I completely agree. I do think the US is going to be the first market to lose a SIM card slot since many carriers there already support eSIMs. And then once the whole market's ready, then of course, Apple can remove the SIM card slot from global units. So Mohammed says, increasing the piece elements in the telephoto lens, does that mean the aperture is going to be lower? Now, personally, I don't know because I'm a pretty big noob when it comes to cameras. I don't know much about them, but personally, I do think there could be an aperture decrease since that's one of the main upgrades we see on a year over year basis. So Fred says, 8K HDR60 ProRes will be 24 gigs per minute. And so he does believe the 14 Pros are going to start with a base storage of 256 and then go up to two terabytes. Now, I'm not too sure about Apple increasing the base storage because ultimately they want people to pay more for their storage. And I think 256 gigs of storage is a sweet spot that might not get consumers to upgrade their storage. And ultimately do remember that most pro iPhone users are not going to be using ProRes. And so while I do see Apple offering a two terabyte version for those who might record 8K ProRes, I also think that for general consumers and top sell them, Apple's still going to give us 128 gigs of base storage. Though don't get me wrong guys, I would love to be wrong about this. Obviously Apple's giving us price increases and so giving us double the storage would certainly be great. So yeah, there's that guys. But tell me in the comments below, does it bother you the A16 chip is going to recycle the 5 nanometer process? Anyways, thank you for watching guys. Make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. Check out the above on details regarding the iPad Pro with the M2 chip. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya peeps.